Having trouble with the Queen's Blood Nightmare Survivor Challenge? You've come to the right place. Like you, I was struggling to win this because I just kept running out of gas, and then I just kind of accidentally stumbled on something outstanding. Ifrit and Dio are two of the most powerful cards in the game because they get buffed when everything else gets buffed, and stage two of this challenge has a bunch of free buffs on it, which pretty much screams out, use those cards. Combine that with the fact that if you win the first round middle crate, you have a 50% chance of getting the card Chadley, which will drop the stat boost of one card on four different cards. The Ifrit and Dio strategy is absolutely monstrous here. By following along on this video, I will teach you everything that I figured out about my strategy and how you two can not only win this challenge, but maybe even break 200 and absolutely pulverize it. So Ifrit, Dio, and Chocobo Moogle are very special cards. Let's focus on Ifrit and Dio. They are grade 3 cards, so you need 3 pawns to play them. Ifrit gets buffed by plus two for every card that has been buffed. Dio gets a plus one, but also for all enemy cards that gets buffed. Situationally, Dio is the way to go, but most of the time you would want Ifrit. So Dio in the clip you just saw was the right decision because every enemy card had a plus one or better. So Dio got very strong there. The round two map has a bunch of squares that are plus two no matter what. And it pretty much screams abuse these cards. Furthermore, if you win the first round crate, there's a 50% chance on the middle crate that it is a card called Chadley. And what Chadley will do is copy the stats of a card and drop it on four different cards. So there's one spot you want to play Ifrit and one spot only. And that is the middle of your area so Chadley can hit four cards. Once doing this, you get an enormous amount of points and you develop a lead that is so large that you can't lose at this point. Now, I tailor-made a deck to get the most out of this and get you to victory. Let's go over the deck first. I designed this specifically for this Nightmare Challenge. Your important things that should never change are two Spearhawks, two Amphidexes, two Two-Faces, you want Ifrit, you want Dio, and you want the Chocobo and Moogle. And then everything else beyond that is preference, and I'll tell you what I have and why I have them. So, I'm going to put a screenshot of the board over my face or something. Fleet Wing is designed for the top middle square during round two. Because it can put pawns up on the Ifrit Dio spot and help it get to triple pawn status. And it just otherwise is there to eat up a spot. Chocobo and Moogle's ideal location is in the far left column, the middle row there. And it is designed to put pawns up, down, and right. And also piggyback off of the bonuses that Ifrit and Dio get and help that square get to three pawns. The Space Ranger is meant for the bottom middle spot. And its primary purpose is to seize the fleet wing square. It's just an option to get up there. Now, 
If I have to, I can also use Amphidex for that purpose, but Amphidex is meant for rounds one and three. But round two is the most important one, so if I have to use an Amphidex for that reason, Space Ranger becomes a round three option. Then, originally, I had a different card for this purpose. The round two board loads with two pawns in the bottom left square. I was putting this soldier on there that does plus three, two squares up, and it also pawns one to the right to open the door for a double pawn next to it. I have since decided that this specimen that I got from one of the chapter 12 challenges is better in theory than soldier, but I can't play it as the first act. I have to have Chocobo and Moogle, or I have to put a Cactuar above it to make the pawns appear to bring out the specimen. So we're going to see how that goes. Sholopod is meant for the square to the right of specimen, and it's meant to boost Ifrit or Dio, plus four, which becomes plus 20 at the end of this all with the Chadley splitting it up as well. Actually, another plus two to Ifrit, it becomes plus 30, I think, actually. <laughs> So, lastly, we have Loveless and Emerald Witch. They are alternatives because you have to have a full deck to just do stuff in round two or try to run up the score in round three and four if you have Dio or Chocobo or something like that left over. So, that is my deck for this. Let's play through it with me commenting. All right, we start this the same way every time. I want my perfect opener, so Ifrit can stay. Ifrit's super important. I fold everything until I get it. This is not it, so I restart. I keep doing this until I get what I want. I want Amphidex, and I want Spearhawk and Two-Face, and another Amphidex and another Spearhawk. Lovely. Spearhawk's actually useful and Amphidex for this next round, so I'm not mad that I have them by any means. So we play them in this order, and then once you play Two-Face, it buffs, buffs Amphidex down. Amphidex buffs up. Two-Face also buffed Spearhawk. We get 886. As long as Loveless doesn't come out, this is a win on all three rows. And that's exactly what we want. So, it's probably going to play some Junk Cactuar right here. But again, there it is. If I saw Loveless, it would have boosted everything and I would have had to restart. So, I got it. I want Chadley out of that middle crate. It's either Chadley or two Mize. And it's mine. So I restart. And we do this until we get Chadley. I can win with my, but I am teaching y'all this method right now, and there's our Spearhawk. So we do that same opener again. Now, when you mulligan cards, they go back in the deck. You don't lose them for the game. So it's okay to mulligan. I've confirmed that. You will get five cards in round three, no matter what. What I haven't been able to confirm, because I keep losing track of what I've mulliganed, is does it go to the bottom of the deck and you don't see it until round three? Or... Does it get reinserted in a random order? 
Maybe I can look back at this and comment. Koitar is what I want. Chadley is what I want. Two Koitars. This is unbelievable. Everything I wanted. Okay. So. The first move is completely dictated by what the opponent's first move was. If anything other than this had happened, I would be playing Chocobo right here. But this pawn turned red. And when this pawn turns red, you want to immediately seize control of that pawn at all costs, no questions asked. So, this is why it's very helpful to get Koitar. Specimen is what I wanted to play in this two pawn square. It's not happening. I am going to play Koitar immediately and not get its buff not get anything other than flipping that pawn green. And I will deal with buffing squares later. And now, the next thing you do is you immediately seize that square. And Fleetwing is the one meant for that square. And I have my first of three pawns in the middle that I need. Next order of business. Um, now that I think about it, Specimen can go great here because I did Koitor. So, it's time for a Gigantor. Oh no, oh no, no, no. That is not good. That is not good at all. I gotta take it back. I'm not getting the buffs that I wanted. I lost it. That is how things can go wrong in this. We start over. Fat Choco came out and nuked the setup, and these things happen. Let's try this again. Got Chadley. Two Cactrots. I like Cactrots. I'm cool with that. Okay. We've got a wonderful opener. This time, the opponent played here. There's not even a pawn in this square. So, I've got Space Ranger, and do I have Chocobo? Chocobo, Chocobo, Chocobo. No Chocobo, so I don't care about this spot right now. This is the Chocobo and Moogle spot. I don't have the Choco. I also do not have a lot of the things I wanted to play. I don't have Shoal Pod for here. And I think Loveless is going to end up going right here where Chocobo goes. That's my gut reaction right now. So, I need to get set up to seize this square. The path is clear. Gigantoir is getting played. To put a two pawn here to help prepare for Ifrit. And then there's still not a pawn here. I do not want to drop Space Ranger until I see a pawn appear right here. So, I am going to continue 
setting everything up. And now that I think about it, Loveless can't go here because I have to get something up there. And Fleetwing is going to be the third pawn for that. So I gotta get something to get Spearhawk in this spot or a Cactrot. And it's actually a little bit of an issue. I don't love playing Dio right now, but I have to just play what the board is giving me. And so I gotta do it. And it's gonna end up being Emerald Witch right here, which I don't love. It's not the ideal setup, but it's gonna win. This is gonna go well. And then Emerald Witch puts a single pawn up in the top left for Spearhawk. Okay, we've got our pawn. That's the green light for Space Ranger. No question, drop it right there. And hope that nothing wild comes out and messes this up. We are good. Immediately place Fleetwing or whatever else you do to take that spot up. Now, like I said, Emerald Witch is going to be slightly wasted this game. It's only going to buff one slot. It just, it is what it is. And I have no other option. I have to get a pawn up there. If it goes here, obviously. And then Let's think about this for a second. Loveless, Loveless could go here. It's not good. Cactrot could really spice things up a little bit. I'm actually gonna go with Cactrot. I've got two of them. I'm saving Spearhawk for the next round. This is our golden setup. This is what I dropped Chadley on, and believe it or not, I'm not going to win the middle row, but I am going to put up a hundred. And I'm not winning the middle row because I was I didn't have Shoal Pod, and I didn't have Chocobo, so Sholopod would have plus foured this spot. Chocobo would have kept getting buffed with everything else. Dio would have been better here, but I didn't have a way to triple pawn that spot to get Dio in there. So I had to put Dio here. I still am going into round three with 120, though. So this is an example that things can not go ideally to plan, but enough to plan where you can really rake here. So This next round is going to look a lot like round one because when you have two spear hawks two amphidexes and two two faces and you draw all 15 of your cards you're gonna get them again and that i have And because Dio was already played, huh?
Yeah, I gotta save Loveless actually. I wanted I wanted Loveless to go in the middle and hit all the cards. Now I guess I don't care. Let's just. I'm actually just gonna take the win. Get some more cards. Have my final stand in round four. The middle crate is always Bahamut or I think Rama. Or maybe Shiva. I don't remember. I don't really care about the crates moving forward. So this round, whoever wins the middle row basically gets Shiva Diamond Dust cards placed on all their empty pawns at the end of this all, which that's, you know, that's nice, I guess. Um, Gigantoir time. It's time to bring out the specimen. Time to seize those squares. I'm gonna see if I can pull off a middle loveless. That would be a lot of fun if I could make that happen in the middle of all of this madness. I don't know if I can. I think I have to do this to get any sort of value out of this round. Yeah. Loveless just wasn't meant to be. Then next up, Bahamut. And then I guess I can drop Loveless right here. I mean, why not? I don't want to have cards going into the final round. And then Koitar is going to buff Bahamut even more. And I guess up there. So. Getting 36 out of this round is actually fantastic. This might be a best score for this round for me. I almost hit 200. And a lot of the things I wanted to do didn't play out like I wanted. So... This is how I play Queen's Blood in general. I think it's a lot of fun. Oh yeah, to put some context here, round five stinks. If you're coming in trailing in round five, you're running on fumes and every card that gets played is an enfeebling card for the most part and they jump all over the map, you are gonna get destroyed in this round. I'm up 160 points. I dare this guy to pull 160 on me. I have no cards, not a care in the world. I'm throwing the round and I'm claiming victory. But yeah, this is how I play Queen's Blood. I like to super buff everything and put up massive numbers. It's all about taking a deck of 15 and somehow artificially populating it with more cards. And the way that you do that is by increasing the value of each card. Plain and simple. 
We were getting 886 off three kind of lower tier cards and winning rounds. So I'm going to play the 215 dominant victory very sped up for you. I hope that you found this video helpful. I'm very proud of my 215 I put up. I'd like somebody to beat it. Send me a screenshot, comment below. I don't want to claim to be a like quote unquote record holder, but this is how I do it. I hope you can win this. I know people were struggling and I hope you enjoyed. Okay, this is my record performance where I got 215 in the end and Things really played out almost exactly how I would have wanted it to happen. I did get one Koitar out of the treasure chest, which was super helpful. It helped me secure the top middle pawn. And the opponent's first move gave me a little wiggle room to do my initial first play, which is Soldier. It has since been swapped to Specimen, as I mentioned in the deck overview. And this actually turned into me seizing as well the pawn to the right of the top middle one. And I hadn't really planned on that. So I was a little unsure at first what I was even going to do with that, if I was even going to be able to hold on to it, but I was able to. So that's another plus two to Ifrit that Ifrit wouldn't have had otherwise. So that's a 10-point swing plus the value of the card. And also, because I took another buff away from the opponent, it lessens the impact of Space Ranger at this point. So... I had already seized the pawn and the Space Ranger slot was open and I just had Emerald Witch in my hand. So I was like, you know what, YOLO, whatever. Let's put Emerald Witch there. But as far as my plan goes, Sholopod, Soldier, and Ifrit were the main three that went where they were supposed to go in this round. I settled on Chocobo for that random acquisition in enemy territory and that helped me run up the score as well. Getting 143 in a single round is absolutely bananas, though. So this was really cool. Now, round three, again, looks familiar. I do the exact same thing I do in round one. But on this one, I am open to getting rid of some of my high-value cards like Dio. And what I was trying to figure out here is if there was a possible way for me to have Dio in one of these spots, but put Loveless in that middle spot where it would hit five cards and thus boost Dio by five plus another one from Loveless, so plus six. So that's what I was trying to figure out here, and I just determined that I wasn't going to pull off Loveless because Loveless doesn't boost another pawn and it also only applies the stat boost upon playing it i can't play around it after the fact so levels is kind of aggravating to deal with it's good when it's good but it just it doesn't work for me a lot of the time and that was probably the card that would go if i determined i needed something else in this deck but i ended up getting dio in this board and it helped propel me to breaking 200 for the first time ever in this challenge which was my goal i wanted to put up 200 on this thing see if it can be done it absolutely can be done and then going into round four because i had to play an extra card in round two i really am running on fumes more than i usually am at this point and so I've just tried to scrape together literally anything at this point and getting anything was good and I was able to do that. And oddly enough, I entered round five with Shiva. Wasn't planning on that, so I just played Shiva. Technically playing a card can be 
detrimental in round five because it becomes eligible to be enfeebled and thus boost some of the cards that the opponent plays. But at this point, I had such a massive lead, I was just like, I don't care. So yeah, this is the best game of Queen's Blood I ever played, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that some of y'all can break 215 and tell me that you're better at Queen's Blood than I am. I would love to hear that, and good luck. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will... See y'all again soon for more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I'm going to keep cranking out these mini games because y'all like these videos, y'all respond well, and I'm going to keep giving y'all what you want.